All right. So Mike, this first question's for you. Um, you know, how rewarding of a feeling is it to, you know, start 60 years ago in your own garage and then, you know, you're celebrating a 50th anniversary. Um, tell me a little bit about how that feels being able to come back out and perform. It's literally amazing. I mean, it's a mir miracle and it's wonderful because, you know, our family was built on music and harmonies. And in fact, my mother came from Kansas and my grandfather, Love, came from rural Louisiana. Um, the, the Wilsons had no money. They actually camped on the beach uh, during the Dust Bowl days, which preceded the Great Depression. Well, this is a long time ago, but they had zero money. But what they did have is talent. They had harmonies. They had music. My uncle sang in a quartet. My mom sang in light opera in a trio. And so it was all of these, all about music. My grandfather, Love, started working in the sheet metal industry. My grandfather and my father worked during World War II building galleys, actually kitchens for, for warships. And so he didn't have to go to the war, so therefore I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, anyway, it's, it's just a combination of hard work and, and, and music. And, um, you know, my... My nephews, Kevin Love, with the he was with the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers after he was with the Minnesota uh, Timberwolves, and then he, he was in Miami recently. He's he's uh, plays professional basketball. My my brother Stan was in the NBA too. So anyway, it's just are they going to be in Greensboro? No. Yes, we are going to be in Greensboro, but it's a combination of sports and music yeah. and and hard work. And here we are. But you mentioned this is their 50th anniversary, 50th anniversary of Endless Summer. Yep. He, and Mike came up with the whole Endless Summer name and he did the whole album and, and the tracks. But Endless Summer is what turned me on to the Beach Boys. And so for me to be out on this particular tour is, I just can't believe it. I, I have to pitch myself. Yeah. He, and, and, you know, John used to drive his bike, he told me, by my parents' house and look in the window and yeah. see the gold albums and, and so but on in the walls. It tells mom called the police on me and then that was, <laughs> no. that was but I've been a fan, you know, because, and we see these concerts, I've been on the road with them this week. I mean, first of all, I thank you to be part of, to be a little part of this conduit that's getting music out to the masses that need it so bad. I say that, that, that I feel like your music was written for this exact moment right now because we need it. I would say discord is at an all-time high and decency at all-time low, but thank God we have the Beach Boy music to get us through. And it's so evident at these concerts. It's become a family affair, right? It is. I mean, there are four generations literally coming to our show sometimes. I mean, your grandparents, great-grandparents, grandparents, their kids, and then the children. Because it's heart music. That's what I've always called it. It bypasses the brain and goes straight to the heart. And that's why you'll see nine-year-olds and 90-year-olds. And this guy is, may I tell him your age? Uh, yeah, you, you, he's 52 years old. 52. Yeah. He's 83. And he works harder than every one of us on the stage. He's mad if we're not doing two shows a day. And I was <laughs> thinking, I was looking at our presidential candidates. Why don't you run for president? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is my job is a lot more fun. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> more fun. Well, I was going to say, John, tell us how you got started with the Beach Boys. Well, I will tell you, I will start and then he can tell you. He was Blackie on General Hospital when we met him first. And uh, he he grew up in Orange County, California, and he played the drums. He loves to play the drums and he plays them really well, which is surprising, you know. <laughs> For an actor. <laughs> anyway, so you tell him. Well, uh, that, I mean, it's that I just, uh, and I, I got turned on to Endless Summer, which is the 50th anniversary of that. And my dad had an, um, an eight track a cassette player in his car. And somehow I stumbled upon that. I was like, oh, like the heavens opened up. Like, what is this? What is this music? You know, yeah. I was so drawn to it. Like I said, because it, it went boom right here. And then I knew a guitar player in the band. I went to see them. I was really bummed out. A girlfriend, I just caught her in bed with someone else. Ah! <laughs> Tony Jeez. Danza, to be exact. Read the book. And uh, yeah, really. And I was, but my friend said, "Well, come, maybe I'll, maybe you get to meet the Beach Boys someday." And so we were playing this. Um, we were playing at this uh, baseball. Well, he was playing at a baseball stadium, and my friend said, "Come backstage. As soon as fun, fun, fun is over, run backstage because it's um, they're going to leave after the encore." So I go back there, and I'm running, and girls are chasing me on the on the on the diamond. And I look up on the big screen, and there's that little skinny guy like this with like jord ass jeans, and I, got, <laughs> I had a dead crow in my head. I bashed through the backstore stage area and um, I'm sweating. <gasps> and and Mike goes, who's to my friend? He goes, who's that? He said, that's John Stamos. He plays drums. He's on General Hospital. And uh, 
he says, does the girls scream for him all the time like that? And my friend said, yeah. He goes, get him on stage. <laughs> and I went on and played Bob Rand on the. And he played with us in July 4th in uh, the mid 80s. And uh, there are hundreds of thousands of people there. And so, you know, uh, John has been a part of uh, our, our our life for, for ever since. I'm so grateful. And I feel like we were talking about this yesterday, like my brand of good, safe, home-cooked, meal-feeling family entertainment is perfectly merged with the Beach Boys at this point. And, and so these concerts, is there still tickets? There must be. Yes, tickets. there are a few tickets. You've got to come see the show because it's two, it's two, we do two hour sets, you know, hour, take a break, hour, and we got to pee and stuff. And um, it's hit, 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 hit. I mean, sometimes he's got to cut out the hits, but it's a, it's a communal experience. It breaks down every barrier, every political barrier, every, every age barrier, everything. It's just a family of, 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 you know, all these people as one that have lifted to this place where we really need to be right now. Right. It's the worse it gets in the world. And it's pretty sketchy out there. Uh, the more positivity uh, is attractive. And we've always accentuated the positive in, in the music. Good Even, vibrations, fun, fun, fun. Yeah. Optimism. Wouldn't it be nice? Tell them about that that thing in London, that study they did about what songs make you the happiest. Oh, yeah. A guy, in, a, a, a psychologist in Sheffield, England, tested with 2,500 people. He tested a bunch of songs to find out because he's a psychologist, he wanted to know which songs make people feel the best. Yeah. And Good Vibrations came in at number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I Get Around came in at eight. Earth, Wind, and Fire by, by uh, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire had uh, September, September yeah. was number 10. And there was a Pink in there. There was a, there was a Bob Marley in there. But to be, come in at number one for making people feel good, that's, yeah. that's quite an honor. Yeah, I love that. And so... You know, you guys have your docu series. You have the book now. How does it feel to be able to perform in front of fans now that they may know a side of you guys that they didn't know before? Well, the Disney Plus uh, is, has our documentary on it, and that's informed a lot of people about the early origins of the group. It doesn't go all the way up to now, but what it does do is it gives you a really good picture of the family connection between all of us and and how it led to disharmonies. And, and we're obsessed with harmon not only harmonizing, seeing the notes, but making a blend. And that blend and those four part harmonies attached to that rock and roll beat that Chuck Berry came up with, yeah. let's say. Um, well, that that made for a special formula. And I'll, like I said, I've been the lyricist on many of the songs and I've always accentuated the positive. Yeah. I, even if you, you know, if you fill out a love or somebody fill out a love with you and you're really devastated, at least you found that happiness at one time in your life. And that that part was good. So that's a song called The Warmth of the Sun. Yeah, and I think you talked about the documentary, which I thought was really well done because it, it really did accentuate the positive. And so many of these documentaries and books on you guys, sometimes they go to the negative. Every band has negative stuff. But what I loved about the documentary was they really highlighted Mike's contribution to the Beach Boys. Sometimes it gets overlooked. And I'm telling you the absolute God's honest truth. And it's not, and and in this documentary shows that he really was side by side with Brian writing all those hits. Brian will say it. Everyone around the, everyone in the band will say it. And Mike would come up with the hooks. I'm picking up good vibrations, round, round, get around. I get Aruba, Jamaica. That's all Mike. And that's what you remember out of those songs. Also, may I say, keep complimenting you, is that when the whole world wanted to be us, it was a lot of it was the, 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 imagery that he was painting with his lyrics about, again, positivity, optimism, yeah. Camelot, you know, and the whole world was like, wow, California, look at what's going on over there. And it's, you know, but because of these guys. There are more American classic cars from the 50s and 60s in East Germany. Used to be East Germany and West Germany. East Germany used to be controlled by the communists, right? Well, there are more classic cars in East Germany than anywhere in Europe. Now, why is that? Because the Beach Boys, we sang about those cars and they represented America and freedom and, and, you know, something really, you know, powerful, powerful. Yeah, powerful. and, and, and great looking and powerful. So it's, you know, it's That's just, you. well, no, not really, but, but we sang about cars as well as the girls, California girls, so many girls, lifestyles. Yeah. Cars. yeah. yeah. But, but, I'm oh, sorry, but I want to tell them what they're going to see because if yeah, it, that was my next question. So <laughs> again, you know, it's just everyone's uplifted. But bring your kids. Bring, well, I do stuff from Full House. We sing forever. We show video and stuff. And then it's just 
I you I don't care how old you are when you walk in there out when you walk out you're going to be a teenager and you're going to be uplifted with love and positivity. And even little kids, they get a glimpse into their immediate future. You right. know, with wouldn't it be nice and 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 uh, God only knows and. I you think, know, so I, it's it's a really great experience. I yeah, think. and you never know. I mean, this guy will tour until he's 117, but <laughs> you know, you never know when the Beach Boys are going to come around to your town, especially in that beautiful place we're playing over there in Tanger Center. Yeah. And I'm not mm -hmm. with them all the time, so if you want to see the Beach Boys and you know some and John Idol, yeah, yeah. it up, get mm -hmm. tickets too. <laughs> yeah, well, he does play on stage. He plays plays the drums. You know. Sometimes you get a guest drummer and you say, mm, that just ain't right. And but he's he's into it and it is, has been into it for well 50 years now. You, playing with the Beach Boys has been next to my wife and my son is the greatest thing that has ever happened to me in my life. And I'm so grateful to you, Mike. And I'm so yeah. grateful to the fans that have been coming out. The shows have been sold out. The we played what the last two days. We played in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, which is great and is beautiful. And uh, we, we're in Asheville now, but we're heading to Roanoke on the way to Greensboro. Don't miss a video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today for more Central Illinois news.